Well, so Fran, thanks for being here. Um, and I just like to start just by asking you, just thinking back uh, over your career um, and, and your life for that matter, um, what, are, what comes to mind when you think of how your perception of public libraries may have changed and, and how public libraries themselves may have changed? Um, and, and how does that affect how you see them as uh, supports for healthy aging? Uh, you know, I, I'm in my mid 60s as of, as of next February. So I'm kind of approaching the age to that I see a lot of the younger jury fitters in our class. They, they have somewhat of a, a stigma about going to their local senior center. They just feel that it's a place for old people and they don't belong. But when it comes to libraries, people just seem to have that warm and fuzzy feeling about them that they're welcoming sites for anybody that wants to go. And they're no longer just places that you go to take out a book to read over the weekend. I mean, they, they're lively. They've got programs going for kids, teens, seniors, and everything in between. And it's changed and evolved um, since I was growing up, at least. When, you know, when I was going to libraries, I was, you know, in my, in my uh, teens. And it was a place where you were not allowed to talk and you weren't even allowed to whisper. And if you whispered loudly, you got a shh from your librarian. So um, we've seen this evolve a lot where it's now more lively. It's not so restrained or constrained, I should say. And um, there's a lot more going on than just what they used to have quilting in the back or whatever. Um, I think what we're going to be seeing a lot more of is that the area agencies on aging, the county health departments, and even the cities are going to be partnering more with their public library library and providing more evidence-based programs for older adults. And included with that are the chronic disease self-management courses that teach people how to deal with diabetes, pain management, behavioral health, weight loss, and a place where they can get in some physical activity like maybe Jerry Fit or Tai Chi class or Walk With These program. There's so many different things that you can do now at a library where before it was kind of a different place. Now it's evolved to this new go-to place in everybody's hometown. Yeah, and that's great. And thanks, Fran. And it's great to hear kind of how you've, uh, yeah, uh, you, you've really recognized kind of the, how, how public libraries have really become kind of these community hubs um, in so many different ways. Um, and, um, and I just kind of, uh, kind of focusing in now on Jerry Fit and kind of the, the Jerry Fit at the library um, experience. Um, uh, are there any particular uh, stories or, or uh, thoughts that come to mind when you think about the impacts uh, that Jerry Fett um, uh, may have had on the lives of the older adults that participated um, or continue to participate uh, in this program? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, we feel that the Jerry Fett program, that, or for at least the people that were involved in our 2019 study, we feel that this program will prepare them for what's in store ahead. And I mean that in because aging is inevitable. We're all gonna get older. And part of the aging process is that we lose muscle as we get older. And Jerry Fit is a program that helps to build back strength. That's our primary goal in the program is to build back what father time has taken away. And you lose muscle progressively over the years. So it's important to retain and maintain as much muscle mass as possible as the aging process continues. So when we receive letters and emails from people that say how much this program has changed their life, it's, it's very warm. It gives us a very warm feeling that we were able to help somebody turn back the hands of time. For instance, we had a gal that uh, wasn't able to, oh, she used to shovel snow but she was able to shovel snow a lot longer and a lot more without having to take a lot of breaks and she got the job done. And apparently, you know, that 2019 winter snowstorm in the Midwest, I mean, we couldn't have picked a worse time to start a study, but those people were so gung-ho and so determined and to go out there and be part of that study and do their exercise and drive to the library through winter sleep, winds, everything. They made it and, and they were, you know, part of history in, in, in what we're doing here. So, you know, that was, that was very compelling to have all these people that were um, 
you know, part of the study and wanting to still go out and brave the weather that we were having during that worst winter of 2019. But the other things that we hear are that they're able to previously do things that they weren't able to do before, like run up the stairs. And that's not something that we're recommending that people test their strength by seeing if they can run up the stairs again. But for some reason, we had a couple of people that needed to run up the stairs, maybe to catch the phone it was ringing or whatever. But they were able to do it and they remarked on their ability to be able to do that, that they weren't able to do that before. So now they've increased their capacity and their, um, their, uh, their it, it's enhanced the quality of their life considerably by being able to do the things that they had basically given up on in the past. Yeah, so I, I think that's that's great. And, and I was I was particularly struck by what you said a moment ago about kind of uh, being part of this historical study. Um, and you're right. I mean, I think this 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 was something that really made history in the sense of, of doing something that no one had ever uh, attempted to do before, at least not on the scale. Um, and so just uh, given kind of the path breaking nature of this whole endeavor, um, what are, what are some hopes that you have looking forward for, for libraries and Jerry Fit? Well, we're looking for more libraries to become hosting sites. And, and when I say a hosting site, I mean as a place that Jerry Fit can be offered so that their community residents or patrons are able to take classes there, whether it be a DVD-led class or an instructor-led class. But um, our hopes is, are that with this relationship, with these relationships that we're building with libraries, that it will not only just stop with Jerry Fitt, but they'll also want to offer additional evidence-based programming. That's where we see it leading. And, um, and I think that the libraries, because they are so considered um, a safe place and a welcoming and friendly place, that people are going to be more adept to going there than they may their local senior center, which is often where these evidence-based programs are held. So, and I think it's also very important that, that these rural libraries get in now because it's, their, their primary communities are mostly older adults that are living there. They've been there their entire lives and everybody has a library in their town and this is where they can join in and, and do a bunch of different things, not just a Jerry Fit class, but other activities and learn things and especially how to manage their chronic diseases. Yeah, and that's great. And and I think kind of um, as as you know um, from from this project, uh, these these types of there's a lot of potential in public libraries to support this, but it's it's not something that librarians can do by themselves. Um, it's going to require partnerships with with people like you and with area agencies on aging. Um, and this wasn't a question I had I had sent you before, so this is kind of just off the cuff. But I'd love to just hear any thoughts you may have about kind of. Um, uh, why um, public librarians, um, or at least rural public librarians, uh, make make good partners for for initiatives of this sort? Well, I think the, the main thing is is uh, there's not a lot of resources that are available to rural rural libraries. They may not have a senior fitness instructor that lives in their town that would be willing to lead a class. So maybe with a virtual led or DVD led Jerry Fit class, this is a way for them to offer an exercise component at their library to their older adult patrons. And even though it's an exercise video, I mean, we look at Richard Simmons and Denise Austin videos, VHSs, as well as DVDs that are still being played in senior centers. Uh, people like that kind of workout. It, 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 they, they seem to be they, they seem to take to it rather readily and they look forward to it. And even though it might be the same video over and over again with Richard Simmons and Denise Austin per se, um, you know, they're still exercising. They're still getting together with their friends and they're still making it a social event and it helps them to, you know, uh, ward off any type of depression and gives them out more and gives them more of a social aspect. So I think we're gonna be seeing a lot more of libraries, because, rural libraries becoming involved with offering virtual fitness because it's it's virtual is it's it's here to stay now it, it was something that kind of COVID forced everybody to pivot and get into the online bandwagon but as many people are finding out um that weren't really 
uh, very familiar with with Zoom and and platforms that require the login and a password in order to access materials. This is they, they've gotten accustomed to it and they feel familiar with it now. And I think it's going to be something that's going to be continuing on and on because we're always going to see some people that might be a little bit hesitant about coming back to either their library or senior center to take a Jerry Fit class. And they may want to do it at home or they may want to do additional online programs and classes at home because they now they know how to. So they're that fearful of the computer type of thing. Um, that's the thing of the past now because they, they know how to log in. They know how to put in a username and password and where to do it and, and just become full hat to them after a while. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of online programming, especially with the bandwidth that um, apparently is going to be increased across the United States and especially to these rural areas. Yeah, and, and you raise a good point, Fran, with, with kind of the pivot to online. Um, and, and I'm not sure if we discussed this before, but um, I mean, one thing that I think also uh, public libraries uh, and including rural public libraries often have available is um, um, a greater technological capacity than, than a lot of other organizations and certainly more, more usually than senior centers. Um, you're going to see a lot more technology rich environment. And we really saw this. I remember in the early days of COVID-19, um, when the National Council on Aging started to put out uh, information on virtual programming, they were just, I mean, I, I, it was shocking how far behind they were compared to public libraries. I mean, public librarians had virtual programming up within days and it took um, senior centers months. Um, I mean, just because they were so far behind the curve in terms of technological capacity compared to libraries. Um, so I see that that kind of technological infrastructure of libraries um, is another, another kind of way for, for these partnerships to be, to be built around. So anyway, yeah, that's kind of just an aside, but uh, but yeah, so I, I, and like I said, this is pretty informal. So just thinking about kind of what we've discussed, uh, Fran, um, is there anything else that, that you wanted to share or kind of just something kind of um, percolating that, that comes to mind that you think would be good to, good to share? Um, just a couple other things, you know, when, when COVID-19 hit, we were, we were all faced with what's gonna happen next and what are we gonna do? Um, and we had already had our online training and certification for our instructors and our coaches in place. So we pivoted and said, well, let's open it up to the general public and especially the people that have enrolled in the Jerry Fit study with the library. They were our primary market again. I wanted to test this concept to see how many of them would actually use their username and password, log into our website and participate in a Jerry Fit online class. And to my surprise, we had a lot of people doing it. And they would do the three workouts they were assigned during the study. And some said, do you have anything a little harder? So it was just like, well, sure. <laughs> so we gave them access to, we basically have 13 different titles that we have right now. And we gave them access to everything. It was like, if you want harder, try it out. Tell me how you think. And I, and I gave them these free of charge because I wanted their feedback on, what did you think of that workout today? Did you find it too hard? Did you find it too easy? Was it just right? Did, what size weights did you use? How long did it take you to go through it? Was there any technical, technological problems that you encountered, such as a lag or something like that? And they were very helpful, again, in providing the valuable feedback that we needed in order to provide and improve our services. So that was another added bad value benefit that we got in working with these libraries was that we were, you know, even though the world shut down, they were still there and we were able to communicate with them and we were able to offer a service to them. And we did this without any charge because of the fact that we did not want their patrons to stop exercising to Jerry Fit. I don't want anybody to stop exercising to Jerry Fit. Once they do it, they should do it for life. It's a program that really you need forever. So, you know, this was nice for us to be able to offer this to them, but at the same time, it forced us to beef up our bandwidth so that now we're now able to offer Jerry Fit Online nationwide. I mean, we have an unlimited amount of users that could log into our website. And before we just had kind of a little beta test of maybe 500 subscribers to see if we could handle it. Because not everybody's logging in at the same time of day like a Zoom class. They can log in whenever they want, 2 a.m. if they want, and they could do a Jerry Fit workout. So that was one of the nicest things that did happen 
from the outcome of the study and two years later, we were there to help those people when they needed it. And, and we were glad that we were able to be a part of their technology that they were offering online as well. No, that's great. And, and it's also great to, that this just uh, the example that you just shared of kind of, um, yeah, be everyone with COVID-19. I mean, it was a new world and kind of things had, everyone had to kind of figure things out together. So yeah, that's great to hear just how, how you and, and the libraries kind of um, continue to work together to try to ensure that their patrons and, and Jerry Fit uh, kind of customers would continue to have access to, to the classes. Um, um, and, and yeah, and, and now, as you know, now that libraries are reopening, as, as you know, a number of libraries are, are returning or have already returned to, to offering in-person uh, jury fit classes. So it'll be really exciting to kind of see um, where things go, both in the short term and, and in the long term. I think this, it'll be really, really exciting. Um, and so we hope this video um, will kind of help to fan those flames and get people excited as, as libraries reopen um, to, to consider jury fit uh, at their libraries as well.